Most of us want to grow in our career. We want to become better data engineers, data analysts, data scientists, and so on. But there are things that often hold us back if we are trying to grow, whether it be things we can control or things we can't. There are a lot of things that I've definitely experienced that have clearly held me back when I was trying to grow. And I really want to talk about the things that you should either avoid or try to change as quickly as possible to hopefully help you grow faster. Before we dive into that, I just want to say, hey there, thanks everyone for joining. Uh, my name is Ben Rogjan, aka The Seattle Data Guy. Uh, my experience is mostly in data engineering and data infrastructure design. I've been doing that for nearly a decade now. Uh, and recently, uh, my last full-time job was at Facebook, but I've also worked in healthcare um, as well as at a startup. So hopefully you find this video very helpful to understand how you can grow and unblock yourself when you're trying to become a senior or staff level data engineer. So let's talk about what will hold you back as a data engineer. The first thing I'm going to talk about, which I uh, experienced at my very first job, which was working for a non-engineering team. Uh, what I mean is I supported a financial team and there was no one else I could really grow from. On top of that, we had no best practices really in place in terms of like how to actually operate um, in a workplace. And, you know, maybe that works fine if you are a senior engineer or someone more experienced because you know what best practices look like, uh -huh. you know how to implement it. But if you are a junior engineer, you probably just read a bunch of books and you can try to implement things as best you can, but you're going to either over implement essentially what you're trying to do to maybe put in some basic standards uh, or you're going to underdo it and just build and build and take every ad hoc request, which honestly is where I tend to lean. I'll just do everything and build everything anyone asks, which often means you put into place a lot of bad practices just to get things done rather than trying to get things done in the long term. And this honestly became very apparent for me. Honestly, the very first few months when I was an intern at this company, uh, I had a senior engineer. They were supposed to continue working there, um, but they left almost immediately after I started um, and they never hired anyone to replace that position. So I often just had to kind of fill in the gap and do the best that I could, like take the knowledge that I learned from school and try to transfer it. But I quickly realized I needed to leave. Like that was like, I, it just became apparent both in terms of how much I was getting paid as well as I just realized I was stuck. I wasn't growing. And I immediately was like, I need to change companies or teams and it needs to be an engineering team. And I can tell you, as soon as I switched companies, it immediately changed like my perspective. Like it was very, very different. Uh, suddenly we were following very, uh, clear protocols in terms of how to deploy code, how to build code, how to design systems. Um, there was clear protocols and standards that were all set into place. And I could just kind of fit into that and see what I liked about it and what I didn't, right? Because now you're actually working within someone else's system and it gives you this ability to see what works, see what maybe doesn't work for you and have just a deeper understanding of how to put code into production. It seems silly, I know, but honestly, how you get code in production in my experience changes so much, whether again, it was at the startup or eventually at Facebook, like making that process easier, but also creating the right safety checks and the right uh, data quality checks and whatever else could kind of go in there and be automated uh, throughout the process really does change how you build. The other thing that's really helpful here is you have this engineering culture and mindset that when you're building things, you're building products, you're building things that need to exist for a long time, not just some ad hoc thing that a financial analyst asks you to build. So that's one thing that really impacts how much you grow is working with teams that have uh, been building for a while and you can kind of see what works and what doesn't. Next, another thing that's probably impacting your learning is you're not spending any time outside of what you're doing at work trying to learn new things. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying you have to work all the time, but especially early on in your career, I will say that the people who spent some amount of time, you don't have to spend all your time, but some amount of time dedicated to learning and gaining depth on topics early on in their career uh, saw that pay dividends in the future. There's a lot of things that I also need to take for granted in terms of what I know that all suddenly just blurred out um, something about a topic that I almost forgot that I'd learned uh, five or 10 years ago because I spent so much time early on just digging into different topics. And the more you kind of do that, the less you kind of do that long term, right? Like you still have to do it um, moving forward. There's so much new technology. You always have to spend some time learning outside. The more knowledge you can kind of put into your brain early on, the more it will kind of just continue to build on each other because you'll see things at your work, you'll just have these layers that are ready to be built upon that if you have to do it later, you're going to be experiencing work anyways. So the more you can build up this foundation that can then be amplified long term, the better you are in your overall growth as an engineer. And honestly, the best engineers I've worked with have depth in some area. Like maybe they're not all the same, like, right? like maybe one of them is amazing at working command line and, and in Vim and in all these different areas. They know every keyboard shortcut because that's what they spent 
the time doing, whereas another one was maybe very in depth in terms of like system design. And they can tell you how all of these different companies have built their systems, why they did it, why it would be a bad idea for your company to maybe try to build, you know, what Netflix is building because it doesn't even fit that scope and et cetera, et cetera. Right? Like some people are SQL wizards. Some people are great with Python and pandas. People kind of pick the topics they want to dive deep into and kind of can build from there. So take some time outside of work, pick topics that you like, like don't pick topics that you don't and make sure that, that they're useful. I mean, that, that is kind of part of it. If you pick a obscure technology that no one's using, it may or may not be harder to kind of fit in uh, in the future. Kind of in that same vein is you don't look at enough of other people's code. I think a great way to learn how to code isn't just coding itself, but like going through and opening up a GitHub library or your own company's code base and figuring out how it operates. Honestly, the first time, when again, when I started that startup, I went through almost the entire code base. As much as I could drill into, I would follow the entire process. I understood how the system worked. I understood how each of the various modules worked. And that honestly paid a lot in the big picture because whenever someone had a question, I already kind of knew where things were. I already kind of knew how things operated. And so I became that go-to person when people had questions or if people wanted new things developed. I'd put the effort into learning that system and that made me more useful. So spend some time, especially if you just got hired, uh, and really learn a, a, a system that you're working on. Spend the first few weeks, you know, no one generally expects you to, to do too much those first few weeks, digging into the code, talking to people, understanding what's going on. That makes you a better engineer in general because you see more code, but it also makes you a more useful uh, engineer at that specific company for the specific use case. Next, in terms of things that block you from becoming more of a senior data engineer is not being opinionated enough. And this is something that, you know, I, I tend to be a middle child. I think I have that bad habit of trying to make everyone happy, but you need to have opinions, whether it be about standards, whether it be about how things should be developed. Even if they're not perfect early on, I think the more you can get comfortable arguing why you think a certain design is right, why you think a certain standard is right, the better you become because one, uh, you'll understand sometimes that you're gonna be wrong, which is okay, uh, especially early on in your career, that's expected. But two, you'll start understanding why maybe one system design versus another is good because you'll actually have to sit there and be like, huh, I think that I should use whatever medallion architecture. Let's just put that out there. But why? Like, is it just because some marketing materials from Databricks told me it's right? Or is it genuinely a good decision? And is it that different than the original way we kind of built things with the raw stage uh, and production kind of approach? Is that the same? Is that different? Like take some time and even argue with yourself. Why would you pick one or the other? Or are they even different? And having that opinion helps you to start to form your ability to actually deeply understand these topics. So don't be afraid to have an opinion, even if it's wrong, especially early on but always be open to other people's opinion. If someone clearly is articulating why a solution is better and you can't find anything, uh, why it's wrong, and then one, you learn it's good, you've learned something. You've learned that it is much better uh, and you've got some good reasons because they've told you kind of why, and now you can kind of double check that. Or if on the other side, hey, you know what? They were actually wrong and you didn't realize why until now. Oh. Now you have those reasons. So the next time you come up to that argument, you know why, and you can kind of talk to those points. So I think being opinionated is really important. Uh, again, as someone who's this middle child and prefers kind of staying in the middle, you'll sometimes catch me even uh, in, in live talks if someone asks me which solution is better. I sometimes struggle uh, just because I want to be kind to everyone. But generally when it comes down to giving presentations or if I'm serving a client, I have clear ideas of why I'd pick one solution or another because I've actually taken the time. You know, for me, I'm one of those people that just takes the time to think through my ideas and think through why I believe one uh, may be better than another. So whatever it takes, have a little opinion here and there. It's okay. If you're wrong, you're wrong and you learn from that. And my final point is less about what you're learning and more about how you're actually contributing. Generally, how I often find people get held back is they're not taking enough control of their career, right? Either they're too scared to take on a larger scope project. So they're constantly taking the same type of project on. Maybe it's not the same type. Maybe one's a migration. Maybe one uh, is some implementation of business logic for a new system, but it's always kind of the same safe size of project. You're never trying to, you know, impact your organization. You're always just trying to impact your team, right? Cause that's generally how, uh, at least, especially in things, how you'll get promoted is you have to start impacting a larger and larger set of either users or people internally at your company. And if you constantly just kind of focus on your team or a small user set or user base, uh, you're going to probably get stuck generally in that mid to senior level uh, engineer because you never expand beyond that. 
you have to start eventually taking some risk to try to do bigger and more complex projects. And honestly, some people feel very comfortable eventually just hitting senior uh, at a lot of things. That's generally like this terminal level. If you feel like you don't want to go any farther, you're not going to get fired uh, for being a senior level engineer. So a lot of people actually like that because it kind of gives them some ability to maybe not feel like they have to take this big risk and they know how to deliver those projects. But especially if you want to go beyond that, there is this need to figure out what risks you're going to take, how to do it, and just occasionally, again, failing uh, and being able to recover from it very quickly. So if you feel a little bit stuck in your career or somewhere, you know, you just feel like you need to make a change, I'd honestly probably recommend doing it because there's a lot of times in my career where I felt like I'm something is just butting against me internally where it's like, I just feel like I'm not growing. Uh, sometimes you need to make a change again, whether that's team, whether that's changing the product, whether that's, you know, finding a new role, those can all be good ways to challenge yourself to make sure that you aren't staying stagnant. So look for those opportunities. I, I hope this video was helpful uh, in terms of tips for how you can grow as a data engineer or honestly as a software engineer or data analyst. With that guys, I wanna say thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see y'all in the next one. Thanks all and goodbye.